now from Yaroslav Strojic. He's an adjunct professor at the University of Wroclaw at Stratpoints Foundation and joining us from Wroclaw. Always good to speak to you, Yaroslav. Uh, so earlier we actually heard from Jens Stoltenberg and he said Ukraine does appear to be making gains, especially on the battlefield, but Russia shouldn't be underestimated. What further action do you think we'll see from Russia, particularly in a military sense? Uh, I can only fully agree with uh, Jens Stoltenberg, Secretary General of NATO. Uh, we cannot uh, underestimate Russia. Russia is still a, a powerful country in terms of uh, military uh, infrastructure, equipment and soldiers, despite the losses, despite the low morale. Uh, but uh, she is still capable of uh, attacking uh, much uh, lesser uh, uh, much uh, weaker uh, Ukraine than than Russia. Uh, this is this is the war full of surprises, and maybe again Russia will uh, gain the uh, the momentum and the surprise su will surprise us with uh, with some attacks despite the winter because we see that the winter is coming, but we still have a dynamic fight uh, on the in the in the east part of Ukraine. I want to discuss how winter will actually affect this military uh, battle because when we were speaking to Dasha, we could see behind her in Moscow, there's plenty of snow on the ground already. The same is going to be happening in eastern Ukraine very soon. As in, and as, it, as winter sets in, it surely is just going to make it more difficult for both Russia and Ukraine on the battlefield. Again, it's true and it's quite obvious that the winter... Uh, might might hamper the the uh, the hinder the the um, the pace of the of the war. But on the other hand, both militaries are quite well prepared uh, for the harsh winter because uh, that's a that's a normal uh, way of uh, exercising. It's a normal climate for for those forces. Uh, that there, there was an always a, a kind of surprise for other countries attacking Soviet Union or Russia uh, in the past, but. For Ukraine and uh, Russia, it shouldn't be surprised. But on the other hand, let's remember that Russia was waiting until the end of February to attack uh, Ukraine because the weather by that time could be better for the uh, heavy equipment, uh, no mud, uh, no uh, no humidity uh, on the ground. So uh, this is, uh, as I said, let's wait for the for the upcoming uh, weeks and months. Uh, but we see now that. There will be still heavy shelling of the cities of Ukraine, and hopefully there will be uh, a shelling back from Ukraine mm -hmm. and armed forces supplied by uh, by NATO and some other countries. Yeah, Ukraine has really put up a strong fight so far, considering uh, the, the firepower coming from Russia is mightier than from Ukraine. What is the type of military support that Ukraine essentially needs from its Western allies to try and gain the upper hand here? Ukraine needs a lot of equipment and it receives uh, a lot. Uh, first of all, uh, heavy equipment to include tanks, to include steel howitzers and artillery, uh, heavy heavy artillery to include some rocket systems. Uh, it needs uh, a winter equipment for, uh, for, for its soldiers and logistics supplies. And all of that uh, is uh, provided by all Western countries, not only NATO, as uh, uh, Mr. Wavrov, uh, and uh, who is quite unhappy uh, about that, uh, is receiving from all over the world, not only NATO countries. Uh, so that's a good sign because Russia is testing the cohesion of the West, not only the alliance, but cohesion of the West, waiting for any country to go out of that system and perhaps saying, let's finish this war. Uh, because uh, uh, there is no uh, alternative. So we claim this is this is uh, uh, this is false narrative from Russia, uh, and the West is still committed to supply uh, whatever Ukraine needs uh, for the upcoming months. Yaroslav Strojic, always good to get your analysis. Uh, speaking you. to us there from Vratslav. Thank you.